If you guys really had the opportunity to see what was going on just now, it was really a back and all Friday. So we're freeing up, but it's Friday. We're also talking some art. And we have on the line with us Mr. Che Loveless. Welcome to the program. Che, good morning to you. Hi. Hey, morning. Are you hearing me? We are hearing you, Che. And, uh, you know, it's good to have you on the program. One thing about Che, Che always wears a smile. You know, it seems like every day is Sunday with you, Che. Uh <laughs> I don't know, it's tough this morning, but yeah, I mean, it is so. We're going to smile through it, Che. You know, Che, you, you know, a lot of people know you, and of course, a lot of persons also um, around the world know your father, Earl Loveless, you know, a uh, uh, renowned Trinidadian novelist. Uh, what is it like growing up with, 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 with um, Earl Loveless, you know, being the son of Earl Loveless? What was it like for you? Oh, it's great, you know. Um, it's always good to have strong characters around and people who think and discuss and yeah so that helps shape who you are i guess yeah so yeah i mean no no complaints you know i mean i rather have somebody um yeah who who yeah they, it's it, it's a lot to engage with mm -hmm. but it's um that's a good challenge i think you know i'm sure you know you get it all the time you use a lovely son you know you look you look like him you know do you feel sometimes that you're walking in, in your father's footsteps at any time? You, you have to go through that, you know? And also no, have to I've never yourself. felt that at all. I always say, like, I, I walk in light, not in shadows. So that's, okay. you know. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. so, so I, I, I learned that your father is, well, you know, he's, he's from Toko originally, from Toko. You're mm -hmm. a, you are, you are a surfer, an artist, a south man also. Um, you were born in South. You know, that is, that is I mean, it's so wonderful because I'm a South man myself. So. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a look and it's a feeling, it's a vibration, you know. Oh, cool. So, so what is it like, you know, making, do you still surf, Che? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it like, you know, being a surfer? I mean, art is, it, it, is, it has so many different types of depictions. Do you um, maybe pull some of the inspiration from your surfing, uh, maybe mm -hmm. from what you see on an everyday basis? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, as an artist or as a creative person, you know, all your experiences channel into what you do, you know. So, yeah, surfing is, is definitely part of that. I haven't um, really made, I've made some actual paintings that depict surfing, but I have a feeling that maybe going down the road, I will, um, I will do more work that's focused around the water, you know, specifically because, but maybe it's something that's so powerful for me um and so much part of my life that is also the most daunting to tackle um creatively you know so i've, I've probably stayed clear of it but at some point um you know god spare life i will i will try to paint water if there's such a thing <laughs> you know and you know so many different types of inspiration i'm sure you, you know you, you seem to be a very passionate person about your about your art what about in terms of interacting with other artists um, what are some of the conversations? Because I, I don't know if some artists are, are a little bit apprehensive in terms mm -hmm. of showing their art to other persons along in, in, within, in the same field as themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, not something that I think about, honestly. I, um, I lecture at the university as well, so I'm accustomed to interacting with other creative people and, and sharing what I do, you know. So, I mean, I've, I've always sought out other artists um because you learn from other people you know i was telling somebody the other day that um it is it is normal it's 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 all it's always been that way that we are fed artists are fed by other artists you know in in, in that sense so it's a lineage and it's a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood so yeah, you have to look at it like that you know else you don't really learn much if you stay isolated so one way or the other you 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 have contact and um yeah so that's how i operate you know, and I'm sure you can draw on so many different experiences and different places that you've been to. One that comes to mind is in 2006 when you um, you went to Dortmund and you painted the pink rhino. It was 
and you painted uh -huh. the blue devils in it. Um, yes. <laughs> to, to think about the blue devils, what was your inspiration at that point to just say, well, okay, when they ask, you, say, you got the, the go ahead to paint on the, yeah. pink, on the pink rhino. Why did you choose <laughs> the blue devils? Um, yeah, because at that point, I was, the, the, this was my, one of the subjects that I painted a lot. Yeah, I was painting a lot of blue devils and, you know, that, the, the, the whole, um, that aspect of carnival. And yeah, you know, I guess when you ask to do something, you tend to do something that's in the orbit of what you're doing presently. You know, you don't try to reach back into the past or go too far into the future. You, you work on what you're you're kind of, you know, where you are mentally. So that's what I had in my consciousness at that time. And I thought, you know, I didn't think, well, I just wanted to do a, a red, white, and black rhino. I think that would have been a little too obvious. So, <laughs> so I thought, let me do something a little bit different that's a little closer to me, but it's also close to Trinidad, you know? So the, the you know, those were somebody, that was somebody palette I was working with, like pink and a lot of that ultramarine blue or the blue devil blue so yeah i i thought that would be a nice way to um to, to animate those winged rhinocer rhinoceroses yeah. that's a word <laughs> <laughs> no no when people look at your art she what do you want them to take away because it's so much about expression sometimes people don't always have the creative eye to see what the artist is trying to tell them through their work um when they look at your work, what are you trying to say? What is your message? Um, I don't have a message in my work, like, you know, like that's, that's direct or obvious, you know. Art is maybe trying to say things that words don't say. So that's why you make art in, in a sense, you know, because it's something, it's something that you, you wanted to communicate on more subtle levels than, let's say, words do. I mean, words could communicate subtly as well, but paintings and, um, uh, and, and different forms of art, like music is, especially and stuff, function on, a, on, on several levels in subtle ways. So I think I like to leave things a little bit open. I think the subject of what I'm painting is there. So yeah, I, I, I rather that to be like a little journey for people rather than something that I am saying what the message is. What I can say is that the work gen is generated from where I am, from the space where I inhabit, which is Trinidad and, you know, which is a physical place, but a spiritual place, a mental place, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a zone from where I'm working, you know. So I, I know that it work depicts a lot of my experience as a Trinidadian and as somebody working in this space. And um, I think that's, you know, that is probably the only entry point that I need for my work. And I think the, the stories are in there. Um, after that, yeah. You know, Chair, we just have a few more moments, but you mentioned that inspiration can come in any, from anywhere, any direction, and it doesn't matter what level you might be at at this point. Who are some of the persons who continue to inspire you, you might be motivated by, um, established painters like yourself, um, young and upcoming painters, local, international, so be it? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I do look at a lot and, and yeah, I, I take inspiration from it. probably too, too much to mention, but I mean, I, I have to mention, um, you know, uh, Leroy Clark, um, who recently passed, who was a, a close friend and, uh, uh, you know, definitely somebody who was encouraging and, and I would say a, a father figure in my life as well, you know, and um, it was tough to, to, to see him transition, but, you know, he's, uh, he's one of those people that, will live with you for, for the rest of your life, you know, and um, quite grateful for having um, been around him from such an early age, you know, he's always been there at different parts, uh, times in my life, so, yeah, I think he was, he's, he's a person that comes to mind, but um, like I say, I, I tend to um, stay quite open when it comes to inspiration, you know, even some of the students that I teach, I see things in their work, or I see, um, you know, a certain energy that yeah, that could inspire you. So I, I, I keep open to that stuff as well, for sure. And you know, we're existing in the, the digital age, and of course everything now is, is virtual and visual, um, that we have to log, um, maybe tap into certain platforms to see what's going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. As we continue to exist in the pandemic, when maybe your next um, exhibition, if there's one coming up, and uh, what would you like persons to always remember you by? Um... 
I don't know. As, as somebody who is quite, I guess, committed to, to what I'm doing, I mean, people who know me have known me, you know. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes people say, well, yeah, I hear you're into art, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's a little bit of an understatement at this point in your life, but um, I would want them to understand that, uh, you know, there's a level of commitment and time that, you know, I, I guess is um, invested in, in what I do. And, um, and if that can help somebody see that possibly by investing time and being serious about what they do, they would, um, you know, they, they would kind of get to the point that they want to get to, you know, and be able to contribute something. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of a good place for me to, you know, to, to, to leave people, actually, you know, that this is something serious, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, it's a real love. It's mm -hmm. a real love. <laughs> you know, you're definitely a passionate person. As I said, always wearing a smile. And what are some of the best surfing spots in Trinidad? Uh, surfing... Uh, well, the best spot in Trinidad and Tobago will be Mount Urban Bay, Tobago, which is a, a, a really a great um, surf, surf break, uh, surf, well, surfing spot. Um, I don't know if you've been there, but um, if you go during the, the, the summer months or the, you know, the August months or that period, um, it's quite small. But yeah. when you go in the right time, you, would, you, you, you could encounter huge waves in, um, in Mount Urban. So... That's probably one of the best spots. And then Toko is good. There are quite a few spots in Toko. Yeah. Um, you know, the East Coast is not bad. Balandra, very consistent waves. Always got something there. You know, but as you know, I can't talk about surfing too much because we have no beach right now. So don't, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's always good to learn a couple of things because um, what, is the, what, is the first, what is the one most important thing you would tell a person? Like, if I wanted to go out there and, you know, beautiful sunny day, Wind in my hair, like you. Hey, well, you're re you're real reminiscent there, you know, because you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's been a while for some for all of us. But um, it's, been a while since it's the pandemic. It's the pandemic. The pandemic. It's really getting. You to had all a dream us. about the beach last night, or what? <laughs> but she, um, you, you, the, the the question is, what what advice I would give somebody who um who wants to um with, with, with regards to surfing specifically? Yeah. Yeah, I mean um. If I, if I was still um, teach, teaching surfing, I would say, call me, but I don't anymore. <laughs> but uh, there are some people, I think the best thing to do is get in touch with the Surfing Association of Trinidad and Tobago. That's actually a good starting spot for anybody interested in surfing. There are coaches and stuff attached to them. And, um, and you know, of course, that's the body of surf, the uh, administrative body that uh, works with surfing. And I've been involved with the Surfing Association for many years and you know i was there when it was formed back in the 80s you know yeah. <laughs> nothing nothing give away too much <laughs> yeah, yeah don't worry don't worry don't worry about it ruckus is one year older but, uh, <laughs> Jay, i want to thank you very much for chatting with us on of course the now morning show want to wish you all the best and continue taking the art to the world okay no problem take care man thank you very much the now morning show continues of course we've got so much more and i know ruckus is going to come back so he's right now taking a little bit of powder and he's gonna give him give him a chance. He must say something before the show is done.